You are a hero. My name is Werner Puchert, and this is Finding Frequency. Euros. During the course of this year, and as I sit here, and arguably also today, looking back at 365 episodes of this project, one or two more to go, right? One or two more to go, and then I've done my job. And have I planned anything amazing? No. I have a very awesome little clip that I want to add into the last episode, but uh, I'll leave that for later. I wanted to do something special today too, and perhaps this is not as special to you, but this is dedicated to you, because I wanted, want you to know and understand that you are a hero. The one thing that I learned through this year, looking back at some of my little soapbox moments and speaking to dear friends along the way, is that the people who were supposed to be the heroes turned out not to be the heroes. And sometimes the heroism, and quotes, heroes are different things for different people, right? Came from the weirdest places. People step up to the plate that uh, you did not expect. Give you an example. A moment ago, I was doing some research for this episode because I had a plan. I was scrolling through trying to find some content that I wanted to share with you and I came across a friend of mine. We've played paintball together years ago. Him in the UK and I was a South African paintball player and we were both dabbling in paintball media. And uh, he started live streaming this year because his business took a massive knock. He started repositioning his brand and now he's doing regular live streams. I came across his stream today and yeah, a total of 41 people, not thousands, 41, but 41 people were watching what he was saying there. And uh, a comment that he made kind of touched me a little bit and made me think. And he said the following, remember guys, 2021 is not going to be the makeup year, the year where we're going to spend all the time making up for everything we lost in 2020. 2021 is the opportunity to rebuild, lay a stronger foundation. And I thought that was an amazing and interesting thought. The amazing things will come, perhaps not next year, but we're really sitting now with the opportunity to lay the foundation for some new things. Because heaven knows, a lot of the people who were building the, or were supposed to build the big things, failed. But I don't want to be negative. I want to celebrate the anti-hero the people who stepped up to the plate, people like you, because I know you're doing the same. You mean something to a bunch of people in your little niche. And I thought today, I wanted to share with you some content, some very, very broad content, and hopefully I'm not going to get in trouble because I'm blatantly copying and pasting some of their content into my little podcast. I just want to share it with you, and by all means, I'll also post links to these people if you wanted to see them in action. But these are really people who touched me and Marta in a way because what Marta and I started doing over the year and not religiously don't get me wrong a lot of the people that I'm showing you now there was these moments in time that we really consumed some of their content together we shared a moment we watched it and arguably for me instead of watching some of the gurus and the experts and the geniuses and the lifestyle coaches I started watching these people their raw honesty and the way that they speak and sometimes the, the rude things they say and perhaps this also reveals a little bit of my kind of uh, sense of humor. I want to start with the first one and I'm going to try something else today. I'm not trying to edit this properly. I'm just going to play the audio back to you and hopefully you'll be able to hear this. So the first person I wanted to play is a guy and I know someone is making, friends of mine are making fun of me, is the guy that I follow on YouTube that does a whole bunch of microphone reviews and he's really good at it. He tests all the microphones and a lot of the equipment that I buy, I buy based off some of his recommendations and some of the tests that he does. But he's got a strange vibe around him. He's got this very sharp sense of humor and uh, very dry, but a super talented guy. And I wanted to play you um, his kind of end of year message to all his friends. And I thought it summed up exactly what I also felt about 2020. 
Greetings Earthlings and welcome to the last video for 2020 that is going on the podcastage channel. I just wanted to make a quick video and thank you for an amazing 2020. I know it was a very strange year and I think I can speak for all of us when I say 2020 can go f itself right in its stupid ass. This was such a f year and I am happy that it is going to be over. I will breathe a collective sigh through my celebratory horn. I will go ahead and I will pop one of these things. I hope that didn't break anything. And 2020, suck it. Then the following guy is something that Marta and I really enjoyed watching together. And we actually ended up doing a lot of the things that he instructs. So he, no, he is nets what I reckon. What's going on champions? I'm here because I'm concerned. I'm worried about you. It's coronavirus season and people are panic buying all sorts of stupid shit. They're buying all the toilet roll. They're buying all the frozen Hawaiian pizzas. And you know what garbage is next to go? This shit. Jar sauce. It's fucking disgusting. Tastes like shit. There's a plethora of fresh food out there where you can just make this without having to drop kick 35 tons of sugar up your guts. Just because you got coronavirus and you're stuck in your house doesn't mean you have to eat like a fuckwit. You can't have toilet roll and Hawaiian pizza fucking sandwiches for the rest of your life. So let me just show you how to make classic tomato and basil sauce with guess what? Fresh food. You might even enjoy and that's what I reckon. He actually is like, uh, I lost, watched his channel for a long time and he started making a huge name for himself. He's now sitting on like 665,000 views. And I tr trust me, when I started watching him before the pandemic, it wasn't close to that. And he started doing this like, kind of cooking show online. And Marta and I have been watching and making some of the food as well. So once again, this anti-hero just fighting for healthy food. And then the next guy I want to play is uh, a guy from South Africa, a, a comedian. And we watched his content every morning. So especially when the pandemic started, we woke up, sat together, Martin and myself at the kitchen table. And if Francie was awake, he will also be there. And then we will watch on Instagram, Skok Poseidon. And he did a countdown of every day of the lockdown in South Africa. And he has the saying, Feeling good, feeling positive. And that's how he starts all his videos. I want to play a little clip of where he takes out people who started doing stuff in lockdown. So I think you probably also remember when lockdown started, people had these rituals. Um, I know that at some stage in South Africa, people were kind of like brewing um, uh, pineapple beer. And there was something else that also started to happen. And he started taking a little bit of a piss out of that. Why is everyone during now in the lockdown, baking fucking banana bread. Everyone and their mother is making baking banana bread. Yeah, in my house as well, my fiance. Baking banana bread almost every day. But she's on this massive health trip, so it's like banana bread with no dairy, no flour, no sugar, no bananas. We're just putting an empty tray in the, in the oven with some butter on it, lacquer. Everyone is baking banana bread. I see people on Facebook, friends of mine. You know, like my one friend, like you in the kitchen there with the arm, arms full of bananas. I'm like, fuck it, Mowgli? What's going on here? He's like, this took pizza and bread. Definitely, people were doing strange things doing this here. And then the next guy I want to share, and I don't know if this is going to come across so well, but I... I uh, so uh, I used to listen to the heavier stuff back in the day and um, friends of mine still follow a lot of bands around and uh, this guy's called Hardcore Kim and uh, he's kind of a, a, a Twitch streamer so he creates content where he listens to um, grindcore, hardcore, heavy metal music and the whole idea of the streaming, like if you're not in this world, you're going to think, and I'm not talking about the death metal world, I'm talking about streaming. You're probably not going to understand this, but this guy listens to music and then reacts to it. But uh, when I first saw some of his videos before, before the pandemic, it was really toned down kind of stuff. He would listen to it and maybe make comments and he's kind of really funny. 
But um, over the months in the pandemic, he actually started building out the whole studio. So at some stage, he was sitting, I think it wasn't a TV, like where they have like a, the, you know, his wife is watching TV in the background and he's listening to this music and then he'll go a bit crazy. And then now he's got his little room where he's all set up with lights and uh, he's got this fancy like gaming chair and listens to music and makes comments um, throughout. But then also, if you know anything about hardcore or death metal or this kind of stuff, there's what they call the mosh pit where people like slam dance and jump around. And then in the videos at some stage, he will jump around, jump up and do things. And over the months, different things have happened by mistake. I mean, at some stage, he slammed into a Christmas tree. He broke a monitor. He's broken his chair a few times. And in some stage, he also brought in a big doll that he just, like in random times during his streams, will start punching this this uh, kind of uh, martial art training doll. Um, strained as hell. But I wanted to play you a little bit of this, and you might get some of the heavy stuff. And uh, this is a point where he's actually... Um, just destroyed one of his wheels on his chair. Hold. Hold it. Hold it. Don't say what. Hold it. Hold it right there, baby. You can hear him breathing. He's tired. You guys owe me a chair. It broke. Again. That was my last wheel. There you have it. He's just destroyed the last wheel that he had spare. He's got this kind of like, hey baby. And he just creates the content and people are rallying around what he's doing. Um, and then someone else that I've been watching also quite religiously is my friend Terry. And uh, always a good message to do, but there's always a bit of a conversation going on between her and her children or maybe sometimes even her husband and uh, that always leads to like these interesting really funny moments I'm going to play you a little bit of a section of um, a piece of one of the videos right at the end so listen to this so I think that's it for me for today I'm already totally uncomfortable with all of this change and vulnerability and I just I really just want to vomit but Ray do you have a uh, anything to say? Not particularly. I think you said what you need and want to say, and it kind of sums it up pretty well. And I want this video to be over because it's already almost 18 minutes. It's a little long, so hopefully you'll be able to cut some stuff out. So thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Uh, obviously, we do read the feedback. I do read the feedback. Slide into our DMs. <laughs> Do you even know what that means? <laughs> I don't think you know what that means. Anyway, as always, take some risk, let go of perfection, and above all else, have some fun. And don't die. Don't die. Don't die. <laughs> so yeah, we managed to not die. I think, I think I'll leave it there. I'll post links to some of these folks um, in the show notes if you want to know more. But I wanted to share this with you because I wanted to give you a little bit more of a glimpse into my life, into our lives here, because I don't tell you everything. We have these secret things that we enjoy that we don't necessarily share. And these anti-heroes are but a bit of a taste of those things we don't share. And in this time, and as I was thinking today, these anti-heroes really did play a massive role in my life, especially sitting here in my little office, working away, and seeking a little bit of human connection. They've offered that in a very genuine way. Now I want you to think about this because my anti-heroes might not be your anti-heroes. Think about the people that played that role in your life. Perhaps it's time to send out a note. Martha said, Vanna, you should send them all a note to say thank you. Perhaps I should do that because they made my day better. Maybe you should do that for the folks who did that to you. But even better, Here's the opportunity. Think about how you could become the next anti-hero. Even if it's just 41 people watching you, or you become that for 41 people, or two people even, there's something for you to do out there. And perhaps 2021 is the year that you can bring your voice to life. <laughs> <laughs>